Okay, well, this is um, the uh, the video for Lab Five. Or, sorry, Lab Six, uh, the comparator, and um, so uh, I'll, there'll be a lab sheet that we'll include. Um, I might pull that up though. Let's see. It's uh, so I want you to see uh, this is this is the program you need to run for this one. It's the FRDM KL25Z underscore driver. Actually, only one E. Uh, example, oh, sorry, that's an underscore. Underscore examples, underscore compare CMP, underscore polling. All right. And uh, so the way this works is there's a comparator. And the way comparators work, uh, they compare two voltages. This is an analog module, and so their voltage is between zero and the uh, and VDD, which is 3.3 volts. You can narrow that range, but you can't expand it. And the uh, the set point in this particular case is controlled by uh, the voltage applied to uh, to the digital uh, the the digital to analog output converter, and it's set for um, halfway between. Uh, 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 zero and three point three, so it's like at what one point uh, six five or something like that, um, or one point yeah one point six five I think yeah. So anyway, um, so so that's the uh, that's the trigger voltage, and in uh, as long as you're um, over that voltage, uh, equal to or over that voltage. Then the comparator will snap and turn on and give you a one output, and then you can use that to do whatever you want. In this particular case, they've used that output to go ahead and turn on the green LED. So if the green LED is on, it means that the comparator input, the the input pin, that's not using the internal. There's two pins to the comparator, right? Because it compares two things, and uh, the the input that's brought out through the external pin. Uh, is compared to the voltage uh, in this case that's set internally by the digital anal analog converter, which is set at um, 1.65 volts. Uh, so, is if the if the other pin is above 1.65, it'll be on. If it's below 1.65, then it'll set the uh, green LED off. So that's how it's set up for this particular lab, and um, <clears throat> so. Let's uh, let's bring up the little video. So first we'll we'll com we'll compile it and run it. So basically all you have to do is uh, click on this and uh, and then hit project open, or you or you want to double click it, or you can right click and go hit. Uh, uh, well, the project is already open, so we'd have to close it. And then then you just uh, go ahead and uh, I'll just compile it again and run it. So I'll, I have to stop it because it's currently in debug. I usually I like to go down here in this uh, control panel and use these, and I hold the shift key and hit debug, which which always brings up this. Now for some reason, and I I don't understand why this is, it's not unusual. Uh, it's not unusual to have to do this twice, and you and you'll get uh, couldn't find semi hosting console or something. But in this case, it's good. But I had to run it twice, uh, even though it was fine. So don't ask me why that is. And then you go ahead and hit the green arrow and run it. Now you can definitely do the README text here, which explains what's going on. And the input to this comparator, the IN0 input, there's an IN0 and an IN1 input. Uh, and you can ch pick which pin you want uh, using the multiplexer setting. Uh, th this is this comes out of the... Uh, out of, uh, uh, um, uh, the uh, pin 11 on jumper J on on header J1. Now, uh, what that is actually set up for, you have to go into the uh, into the data, or well, you can go into the you can go into the the file here. For some reason, this isn't working, so I give up on it. I don't know. Uh, well, anyway, you can go into the code and you can sort of see because they set it up up here at the top. And what they say is, it's PT6, PTC6, which is comparator zero, input zero, and uh, it's on jack 11, uh, 
10, 11 of jack one rather. All right, and that's user channel zero. Um, then the internal DAC uh, channel that they're using uh, uh, goes into comparator channel seven. Uh, so anyway, um, so I'm gonna make this short because it's late and I wanna get it done. Uh, but anyway, so once, once you get this running, it just runs in this little loop. It checks to see if the, if the uh, event flag is high or low. And if the, if, so if we hover over this, this basically equals one. And if you hover over all this, it equals one, then it's gonna be true. It's gonna turn the LED on. Otherwise, it's gonna be off. And um, so let's run it. Uh, maybe, it, oh, I uh, did I already run it? Uh, I guess I am running it. And uh, so I don't know why it's, so, so what you can see, so let me bring up the, uh, Yeah, I guess it. I guess it doesn't. Uh, yeah, right. That's fine. Uh, actually, I think that's right. Okay. Yeah. All right. So let me bring this up. So basically, it's really straightforward. I I went ahead and used my pot, but I'm going to show it to you without the pot here in a minute. So so the first thing you see. Uh, uh, and, and if you use this, make sure, you, uh, if you use a pot, make sure you be careful. In this case, I also have a temperature sensor here. If I reverse bias the temperature sensor, I'll, I'll kill it. So I have to make sure my ground is the ground and my VCC is the VCC. So I, I plug this into VCC and this into ground. And, and then I put the wiper, which is the far pin here, into uh, pin 11 of jack 1, which is... Uh, uh, which is port C6, I believe that's what I said. Um, and let's let's shrink this down, and we'll go back to the uh, code, and we'll just make sure that that's correct. Yeah, PTC6, and that's the comparator zero, input zero. All right, and then in the other channel, uh, which is uh, it's 7U, we're putting in the DAC. All right, and then the DAC down here, we can see the voltage uh, is set for 32, and uh, I forget the deal, uh, but anyway, the DAC value is set at 32, and I think, so 64 would be uh, max. And uh, so anyway, um, yeah, so we could change this, and it would change at different different uh, different voltages. Uh, okay, so as I, as I take the, uh, let me bring the um, picture back up. So as I as I change the pot, uh, I go down to low voltage, and then you can see I'm going to turn it. And as I turn it, uh, what you'll see is that uh, we'll get to a point, boom, where the comparator goes on. And then I can keep turning it. It doesn't make any difference. And as I turn it the other way, when the comparison fails, it, the LED goes off. Now this is what's really interesting. If we pop out, if we pop this out, and don't use the pot. You'll... You'll have more fun with this um, if you do if using it this way anyway. So now here's the input to the comparator. Now look what happens as my finger as my finger gets closer and farther away because. Now, why is it, what's going on there? Now, now if I uh, if I ground this over here, if I ground this here, then it's going to stay off all the time, and I'm not going to be able to mess with it. But if I have a floating input, look what happens on that floating input. As as my hand uh, has a little bit of electrostatic charge on it, it induces it induces a voltage, and that's because that that input is so is so high impedance that it takes very little uh, current and you can see it's it's very sensitive uh, and it definitely can detect uh, electrostatic and uh, you can also I should probably could get the opposite effect um, and remember that's because this is an analog input now our digital inputs aren't you know they don't behave this way they're they're much more robust now if I if I 
Um, if I go down here to, uh, I plug it into VCC, then it'll be locked on. So that's giving it 3 volts, 3.3 volts. And now I can mess with this and it won't really affect it. But when I have a floating input, look at that. Look at how just any kind of messing around with it induces this charge. And the comparator is that sensitive. It, it picks up that it that, that induced voltage exceeds. And it draws such little current that um, that it's just a, it's essentially a floating input, very high in, impedance input. And uh, that's why this, so you, you don't ever want to leave one of your comparator inputs uh, floating. Okay, and now it's off because I've grounded it. And now I can't mess with it and, and affect it. But a floating input picks up the ele electrostatic discharge, uh, you know, on your hand. And, and even things like, you know, even plastic things like uh, pieces of paper, um, you know, like, like, like well, it would be interesting to see how it does with this. It will pop this out. And, and so. so now it's on all the time. That's interesting. Um, so maybe I'll turn it off. I guess we just got it so fired up. Okay, yeah. So, and you can watch, you can see how. And why it's why it kind of gets brighter and darker, it's because it's cycling. It's not on all the time. And I guess you can, yeah, I think you can see that pretty well. But again, when we ground it, when we ground it, then uh, then it should it should turn off completely. And then now if we have that, now watch as I bring this, I bring this little piece of paper, I'll bring it, I'll bring it into the field. You can see it turn it on. Look at And then but if you do the opposite end of it, you may turn it off. So again, you can play with it a little bit, but remember don't stick it in anything uh, too powerful because you'll blow your chip since you've got a floating input here. Alright. Uh, and I'm gonna ground it again. Uh, yeah, so we'll, we'll, we'll ground it there and it should just be off. Alright, so that's what it should look like and hopefully you'll have a little bit of fun with that uh, and learn a little bit about how Comparator works. And then uh, there will be a few questions for you to answer. Alright, I'm going to stop the uh, video here.